Hey people, Mike Martins here with the Mike Martins channel. Thanks for joining me, liking, subscribing, and all that jazz. Well, what I got for you guys today, well, I got a story and a half for you guys today. And it's something that's been breaking since pretty much 2008 and then ushered in 2010. And it's the story of the housing market and how it's being weaponized against us. How they're using housing as a weapon against the middle class dreamers that want property ownership to live the Canadian, the American, the Australian, whatever dream it is, to work, stake a piece of, st stake something in the ground and say, I, I got my land, I got my family, I'm going to raise my family. That whole perspective was weaponized and turned against us via housing affordability. So what, what did countries do? Well, countries depended on money laundering, tons of cash uh, being brought in to buy out um, the middle-class citizens across the English-speaking world. So what are we talking about? Well, the weaponization is, is very powerful because it was something that was deep-rooted. So everything you're seeing around you that's been happening for the last three years, it all goes back to mismanagement of government, whether it's funds, the deregulation of banking systems, uh, artificially low interest rates for too long that destroyed... Um, basically destroyed the value of currency, printing more money than, you know, just going on and on and on. But it all ties back to housing affordability. If you're living in a blue state in America, you will agree with me. You would say, yes, Mike, Amerifornia is real. You called Amerifornia the day Biden was selected. The day he was selected, not elected. You were right, Mike. You made that video that day, and you were 100% bang on. Rural parts of America went up 50 to 100% in value because of Amerifornia. Now, America was several years behind uh, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the UK uh, because America had a lot of anti-money laundering and all this other stuff that was going on. So America was more focused on trying to divide the people in a different way as opposed to where in Canada... Australia, New Zealand, and the UK, and the blue states of America, they were more focused on impoverishing people, whether it is bringing in the, the you know what, the hard, the hard um, stuff, bringing it in and wiping out our youth across our streets, across our cities, and wiping out entire families. And it's, it's all design. They even gave it clever names. If you're laundering money in Canada, it's called the Vancouver model. And other countries adopted that idea of bringing in their money and opening their cities to foreign money as Xi Jinping announces himself as the emperor of China. I think that was in 2018 or 2019. More and more people wanted to flee the scene in China and bring their wealth overseas and not doing it by the book most of the times, destroying the people that built those homes and condos. Let's take a look at what's happening. Toronto real estate developers, watch this, sold zero new single family homes last month. And we talked about first time home buyers trying to get into the markets and they can't. They just can't get into the markets because it's most most of the time it's uh, housing is 26 to 35 times their annual income after taxes and all that stuff. They have to save for, sorry, 26 to 35 years for a down payment. So here it is. Better Dwelling is the only non-government backed media source that I could find about housing. So there it is right there. Greater Toronto Real Estate is barely recognizable after a sudden market shifts. Atlas Group data shows that new home sales plummeted in June with no single family home sold in the city. Not one. At the same time, inventory made a small climb, but improvement, uh, improvement with falling sales. So Big improvement with falling sales. So there it is. So you're going to start to see an oversupply on the markets as Canadians who are left living in these cities, who didn't leave, are going to be left holding the bag. So Greater Toronto new home sales are plummeting. So we were we went over that already. And uh, Greater Toronto new construction demand has plummeted over the past few months. Over only 175 new single-family homes were sold in June, down 85% from last year. Condo apartments fell 1,519 sales. Condo apartments, on average, in Toronto, uh, one bedroom started for 400,000 to 600,000. So it, it's out of reach. And let's move on. So what do we talk about over over the years, Toronto real estate developers? What, what, what did we talk about? First-time home buyers. There it is, right there. First-time home buyers 
uh, loans equals disaster ahead, forcing people who can't afford to pay it back five years ago. So what they were doing, they were offering people first-time homebuyer loans. Hey, they were calling them housing grants or whatever. In the States, if you get a housing grant, I'm not sure in what states. There's some states you get a housing grant for a first-time home buyer. You don't have to pay it back if you live there for three to five years. I think it's three or five years. You don't pay it back. In Canada, you pay it back. You pay it back with interest. So they're trying to push people into homes they can't afford to buy with having them to pay back the the first time home buyer loan. So now this is five years ago. Now people are coming up now and having to start pay this back because I think you pay interest free for so many years. So there it is. What else? Affordable cities left in Canada for middle class to own a home. So not many, not many if you're middle class. So we were running out of cities already, and this was two months ago. I think we have a few cities left you could move to. First-time home buyers struggling to make ends meet. People are leaving big cities five years ago. First-time home buyer loans will rally markets, but it will spell doom if rates go up. So people get tied into this comfortable mortgage. People will basically get tied into this beautiful, comfortable mortgage and a good rate at 0.5 or 0.3% and basically an interest-only type mortgage. And then when it comes with rates go up, these people are they're they're dust. They're finished. And that's my video there from housing will never crash because they're going to keep propping markets and they're going to keep getting the real estate um, uh, going up no matter what they do. And I kept telling people, to, warning people about this because they're going to do whatever it takes to prop these fake markets. First time home buyers don't buy it's a trap. You will use equity to eat. When rates, when rates uh, rise, it's over three years ago. So um, Toronto housing market in danger to crash big time. Investors fleeing people underwater. What am I talking about? Well, here it is right here. Canadian HELOC debt hits a nine-year high for growth as a, uh, abrupt surge in borrowing. So more and more people are borrowing and they're borrowing against their homes to eat. That's what it's for. The price of food has gone up or they're buying gas to buy food to eat. Uh, Canada's uh, rising borrowing cars, uh, costs aren't slowing down households from borrowing home equity. In fact, the exact opposite is happening according to home equity line of credit. So I actually made a very specific video and it's right there. Canadian raises, uh, Canada raises interest rates and Canadians took out $2 billion in HELOC debt in just 28 days. Two months ago. So basically, they're referencing what they made a video about, uh, what they talked about. So Canadian HELOC debt hits $171 billion. Canadian HELOC debt has has been kind of slow over the past few years, but it's changing really fast. The balance of HELOC debt reached $171 billion in May, the most since November 2020. It was 1.4%, 1 uh, 2.3 billion higher than a month before at 3.0 and we covered that a month before because they raise rates but people take more debt on so what we're we talking about helux uh homes are new atm machines people borrowing too much five years ago people are house broke using equity in their homes as atm machines four years ago uh, mortgage payments are soaring in toronto and vancouver three years ago seniors seniors oh now owe almost four billion in reserve mortgage debt so the, the Toronto market fueled by money laundering and shadow banking four years ago. Canadians more indebted, destruction of Canadian middle class seven months ago. So there it is right there. So HELOC debt is basically taking uh, a front seat now as more and more Canadians are using their homes as ATM machines to eat. So what are we talking about here? So let's move on. Uh, Canadian cities have seen investors buy up to 100% of newly constructed condos. So foreign investors are coming in and dumping their money on Canadian shores with our lax rules and allowing, basically, here's the other article, Canada would be in a recession without money laundering, basically propping us, propping this for years and bringing in money to wash out the Canadian, Australian, blue states, uh, uh, UK, middle class. And that's a, a structure or framework that they've created to basically destroy us. We build the buildings, but get the hell out of them. You can't live in them. And that's what it's become, right? So let's take a look here. So Canadian cities have seen investors buy up 100% of newly constructed condos. When I told people 
um, you know, it's all foreign investors and people were telling me, yeah, you're full of, you're just out to lunch, Mike. You're just a racist. But here it is. Worried. Falling Canadian real estate prices will hurt owners of all new condos. Well, you can relax because a majority of them are investors. The data provided by Canadian Housing Statistics Program show more, uh, most recently built condos weren't owner-occupied in 2020s. Again, vacant homes across Canada, across the Commonwealth. The owner could have bought it uh, to be a landlord as a second home or just uh, needed the house uh, shaped safety deposit box. There you go. House shaped safety deposit box. And that's dumping money on our shores. In any case, Canadian cities have seen as little as 0% of recently built condos since 2016. Uh, go, uh, go to end users. Uh, investors have outpaced the end users of what's generally considered the most affordable ownership option. Discussed how foreign investors, uh, predominantly from China, were now not buying those mansions and and whatever bigger homes or whatever. They were moving into middle class stuff like townhomes, condos. They were basically pushing everybody out of that too. So there it is, right there. So no one worry. Uh, it's the ha housing is only going down uh, on empty units, basically mostly. Uh, it's not owned by Canadians. So there it is right there. Four years ago, middle class to be wiped out by 2018. Money laundering, destroying young families. Uh, Chinese money laundering, id, I guess, is destroying Australia. Australia money laundering fiasco. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Right there. Money laundering, destroying home affordability in Canada. Worst in almost 30 years. Toronto, worst. So there it is. We've been reporting it there. Money laundering, destroying home affordability in Canada. Worst in almost 30 years. Toronto's worst. Toronto's worst F uh, four years ago. Oh, yeah, it's going to get bad. Uh, that person working 72 hours a week minimum wage can't afford a one-bedroom apartment. Thank you, free market. Governments need to patrol our borders and stop. So basically, that's it. We've been warning about it for a long time. So there it is. So... Uh, Look at this, $45 billion owned by foreign investors in Vancouver, Canadians to be extinct in Vancouver by 2023. And it keeps going on and on. And uh, Toronto homes invaded by investors. Uh, this will cause mass exodus of the middle class five years ago. Uh, investors fleeing to Toronto and Seattle to destroy the, uh, the middle class there, uh, walking empty streets. I think the video, I'm walking the streets in this video, Showing people in Vancouver what's happened. Let's take a look, guys. Showing people what's happened. Here, Mike Martin. Yeah, so showing people what's happened and how there's this all this this just empty, complete empty streets, uh, tons of for sale signs, and just you know people abandoning because of the foreign buyers tax. But don't worry, they scrapped the foreign buyers tax. Don't worry, they got rid of that. And if you're living in New Zealand, uh, back in 2018, middle class and homeless families get free tents. And we were talking about that uh, a while back on the channel. Well, they've been weaponizing housing or the Canadian or American or whatever dream you want to call it for years against us. They've been destroying the fabric of what we built. We build these places, but we can't live in them. So that's become a major issue in, in Canada and why Canada has been for so many years. I've been ringing the alarm. For so many years about this, I've been threatened, I've been all this stuff, and I still keep going because I want people to understand that a lot of the problems that are stemming of this goes back to basically, if you want to go back way back to 2008, if you really want to go back, but it really started in Canada in 2010 uh, during the Vancouver Olympics, and that, that basically was a big uh, that's when Canada basically opened itself up to the world to launch the new Vancouver model. No questions asked. No, not, you know, bring in your money. Don't worry about the people that live here. We don't care about them, right? So that's how they're basically we were treated. And that's how it went on. And then the more and more deregulation of banking systems, more and more lowering interest rates to, to get the first time home buyers to compete. We're all in this. If you go back, this whole thing that's been happening in the last three years. It's because of housing affordability and basically doing what they can to get middle class people in their own markets. But it worked for a while, but now your $1.4 million home that you could buy in Georgia for $46,000 isn't cutting anymore because now they're going to start raising interest rates to combat inflation. 
Anyways, guys, I've spoken enough. Let me know what you guys think about this video. Please comment below. Let me know what you guys feel, how it's hap what is happening around in your area. Uh, if you're seeing a correction, please let me know. I do read the comments. And I don't delete your comments, by the way. Mike Martin's here. I have spoken.